All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about is how to do a trend in Factory Talk View ME, Machine Edition. So for a panel view plus, panel view plus performance, or for any type of thing like that. So this is gonna be not an SE. I do prefer, let me, let me on the side note, I do prefer using Site Edition because you can do more with it, but this will be showing you how to use a data log for your actual trend. You see that as trendable data, you can see that. Okay, so how did I do that? Let's go into and talk about this. First, I wanna talk about two things. Uh, I want to, if you have any questions too, there are, there's always this trend um, in, it, in the uh, libraries that you can reference off of. Um, but again, it, it's somewhat, I'll be honest with you, kind of, it's kind of confusing because the way they do things, um, you can actually jump a pin right and then all of a sudden you think it's working but it's not working and realistically you hit home but you really need to hit end for it to start so it's a little bit confusing so i completely ignore that uh just a side note so uh just i just want to let you know it, it is there if you want to use it for reference go down to data logs i created a data log for this actual trend okay this data log is i gave it a name I gave it how many points of data that I need. Um, the, in this case, I was trying to aim for 30 days uh, at 10 minutes. So giving 30 days worth of information over a sample time of 10 minutes. I've shortened that to give this example and I've taken it to C drive. Okay. If you want to go to uh, like a storage device, you would just type in backslash storage card to slash backslash logs and that would take you to to the basically to that um, right now this is going to my logs um, if i go into right here my c drive this is going into that log right there so just keep that in mind um, and you can always too if you have a problem and for some reason it's not writing to the storage card you can always hit system default and that will help you uh, con like if you have any problems with running the MER or the runtime file on the panel view. But again, when it comes down to it, if you are you can, and I have done this, you if you have a SD card and you have it on the side of, and you insert it inside of the actual panel view plus, you can use under backslash storage card to backslash logs. And it says flash card folder terminal only. So just keep that in mind. I am running C drive logs because I'm running it in, in design mode. Okay, so I want to show this and showcase this in design mode. So I'm pointing it to my C drive. That's not going to work on a panel view plus. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's not going to work on the actual panel view. You would have to change it to the storage device or default. The, the logs, I'm actually sampling every uh, one every minute right now, and I have one tag inside of my log. Okay. So to choose tags, you just come over here and choose your tag you want to use. And as soon as it's in here, you hit add and it adds it right here. So that's how to make a data log. The second thing you need to understand when making the runtime, you go up in here, you go here to startup in your startup folder. And after you have your data log made, you want to check the box for data log and you want to check the left the one data log that you use. Okay, so you're not allowed to use multiple, you, you, the MER file will not actually trigger and, and run multiple data logs. It will only run one data log. So just keep that in mind. So you pick the most important thing or whatever the case may be. I do know that you can connect SQL and all this other stuff to it, but in the case of you, you just using the, the storage device and the data log, you're only allowed to start that one uh, you can write a, I mean, it, there, there's other ways to, to really kind of go about it, but there's nothing that's really e simple and easy. Even Rockwell tells you, you can only start one from the startup folder. Starter folder start, starts alarms, starts the information messages, anything you want. Um, I'm actually starting mine in my main. So that's my main screen. And then I'm actually starting my data log. And that's every time that the MER file starts, like say you reboot the panel view, it will restart that data log. Okay, so let's talk about the trend now. 
now that we got the data log stuff out of the way, and we did kind of talk a little quick about it, but just keep in mind, I want to make sure that I illustrate how to do that. This right here, if I pull this up, in this environment, if I'm just testing the screen, it's not going to show the data log. So keep that in mind because the reason is, is because the data log is not started because I'm in the design mode. To start the data log, you have to come over here and start the data. You would have to start the, uh, the basically on your PC, you would do test application. That's how I did that. So just keep in mind, if, you, if you're trying to, to sample this, you'll notice that it's not gonna show that data log. Don't worry about that. Um, right click, if it, well, here, let me show you how to add a, a trend real quick. Go to objects. Then you're gonna to go to trending and you go to trend right here. Let's just place one in here real quick. You can uh, change your refresh rate, seconds, minutes, whatever you wanna do, hours. Um, again, you can change that to whatever you want to. Um, when it comes down to it, always choose connected points. If you, shoot, if you choose marker only, it's gonna show you just the marker. It's never, it's never gonna show you a line on the trend. So just keep that in mind. Um, connected points is what you want. The background, if you want to change the background, I like to keep my background white. Um, uh, and you see that it changes it to the white color. The font, you can change the font color if you want. You can come over here and bold it. You can come over here and make it, make it bigger. Uh, the pins, you add your pins up here. How do you make your pin width bigger? You come over here and make the pin width bigger. How do you add the pin in your tag right here? You come over here to connections and add the pin in the tag. You choose the tag that you want to use and you add the pin. That pin will automatically populate here. You can change the color. If you don't do not like the color, you can come over here, change the color. Um, this is where you connect your data log. So now that I've showed you how to add a trend, I'm going to delete this and open up the trend that I have set up already. So the chart style is a standard. I'm not using anything special, okay? The chart update rate for, this, for the illustration that I'm giving is a one minute refresh rate. The display, again, connected units. I'm using a white background. My font currently is a 10 and it's bold. Look at my pins. I added my pin over here under connections. So my pin right here is, is going to be this color right here. I've made it visible because you can change the visibility of this if you want to. And I've also made my line three. So it's a thickness or a width of three. Now I've also added my data log down here so that when the trend is running, it shows the data that's inside of the data log along with real time data as well. So at this point, you come over here, you can change your sample rate, um, the number of grids and stuff you want. Like if you wanted a couple more grids, you can change it just like that. Personally, um, I don't, I like to have just a certain number. Um, the grid lines, like right here, like if you see that, you can change how many grid lines you have. Uh, the, here's another critical thing that I want you to understand so I am running a trend for percentage. So I'm running a custom zero and a hundred. So I'm running a percentage from zero to a hundred. That's the scaling that I'm, I'm using so that I have zero, 20, 40, 60, 80, and a hundred. Now, if you change this grid line, let's just change that to seven real quick. You see how that changes the, the layout and the look of that trend. So even if I went to 10, you would think that would divide by the correct number and give you, you know, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. It, it doesn't, okay? Let's just break it down like that, okay? It doesn't. And this is how many decimal points you want, okay? So in this case, I want one decimal point, and I want to keep this back to a, a easy div divisible number so that it, it can easily see where it's at, like 0, 20, 40, 60, 80. Although if you want granularity, you can come over here and change that to whatever you want. 
like if you wanted all the way up to 20 you can go over there and get a, a tremendous amount of data in my case I'm just gonna have this go down to 4 and then have that just like that now let me open that up one more time and then so we talked about we talked about the y-axis common it's just your height your and, and I like to take the uh, uncheck the box called focus highlight that's going to be like a, a green box around your actual trend I don't like to see that personally um, I do do key navigation and I do visibility again this is where you put in all your pins if you I'm using one pin and one pin only so this is how to set up the trend how to make it look however you want to with the customization background color uh, make sure you have connected pins here and then to run it again so right here you can see now if I do change that number in my PLC right now it's 81 if I change it to 75 it's gonna come over here and change that number when the next time it updates okay so the next time it updates it will change that number so you see the little dip that I had here but now I'm waiting on that refresh rate well what was the refresh rate what well, we can look and tell our refresh rate rate was one minute so if we looked at one minute if we come over here and did a one minute timer and it's not gonna take a complete minute now because I've, I've made a change and we'll see but and it's going to take a one minute timer before that you'll see that change so you can control your refresh rate by doing that um, in my case I've set the uh, in real life I set this up to uh, 10 minutes and over 30 days so you see it in one minute passed and it tra it tracked that data now so if I go off of that screen and I come back on that screen it's going to show okay so it will come back and show that again it it's showing the the data that has been logged on the, the data log right now the data log has did not trend that because the timing of the data log is not the exact timing of the trend sample rate so just keep in mind those two have to perfectly line up for that to happen um, it will however show that so uh, I don't know where we're at in our our one minute timer is done so let's do another one minute timer and come up here and let's change that uh, let's change this again to like say 90 for this instance we'll do a timer uh, the timer well, let's restart the timer okay so there there we go for a minute and then we're gonna come back over here to our screen and then we're gonna populate that and then we're gonna see what the trend shows Okay, so this should show everything. So where are we at on our timing? We have 35 seconds left. So let's look at that when that comes in. It should be a little bit, because I started that timer a little bit late, so just keep in mind, it should be just fine. All right, so this should jump, or it should go down and then go back up as, as from what I think it should do from the data log, if the data log is sampling uh, correctly. So just keep in mind, you can only start one data log. That's the most important thing um, when you, you understand that. And then obviously, let's look at the trend at this point. So timer's done. Doesn't look like we updated for some reason. So there we go. We finally updated. All right, so again, so this, this does do roughly a minute. Keep in mind, I'm in the developmental mode. So if you wanted to see that, how to do that, right? You can see this, you can come over here and how to actually run this, you wanna to go to and test it on your actual computer. You go to application test, okay? Application test, and then what this is gonna do, it's gonna start the whole application but this is just testing it on your desktop, okay, or, or your laptop, or your, your your developmental environment. It's not going to be how it functions on completely how it functions on the actual panel view plus. So just make sure if you have a certain way you want to set that data log up again when it comes down to the where the file is going to be stored, 
you need to make sure you're pointing it to the re correct direction, right? So just keep those things in mind when you come down to it because those are very, very important. Uh, trending, again, is very simple to do, but when you're using a data log with a trend, it's a little bit different. So just keep in mind you can start one and then have that screen populate and pull up the data. So our data log does have information in it. So we should be able to start this thing up and actually show that. So let's, it, as soon as all this goes through, and you'll see while it's creating the runtime, um, it's creating the file. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I, cl I click test, right? So test is what you want to you wanna actually select. So it should be starting the graphic right now. Yeah, so it's starting the application. Again, this is testing the application. And then the application will start. I do have uh, faults that are there. You can tell that I'm not connected to the actual system. Um, but then when we come back over here, we can see our data log kept our data, okay? So that's how to use the data log with a trend. That's how to trigger it. It is triggered based upon, again, the startup the startup up here. That's how you trigger it to start logging the data, okay? And for the sake of using it in a trend, you want to tie that section, like if you open up the trend in the, the uh, pins, you wanna come down here to data log model and check that. You go in here and select that one. If you, if you have it selected none, it's not gonna use the data log, okay? So hopefully that showed you how to use a data log with a trend. I know this video ran long, but again, when it comes down to giving a lot of detailed information and how to do things, sometimes that's what it takes. So instead of building all that in front of you, which would have took probably three times as long, I just showed you what I have done and what I did to actually get that to work. So with that said, you can see this information, you can see the trend is working. And hopefully that did help you understand and open your eyes on how to use a data log with a trend. All right, and, and use in Factory Talk Machine Edition. With that said, hopefully you learned a lot from that video. We'll see you guys on the next one.